Today we're going to be doing a little resawn of the lumber that we're using to strip plank the first layer on this 43 foot Alden schooner that we're building here. Now we're going to do it on this bandsaw right here. This is a 40 inch L power ship saw that I uh, bought quite a number of years ago. Uh, it was kind of wrecked when I bought it. A building had fell in, uh, fallen on it in 1938 and uh, it bent up some of the shafting that was uh, uh, of the tilting mechanism and the wheels were all bad on it. They were made in sections actually, wooden wheels. It's got wooden wheels with metal spokes. Now you can't see the wooden wheels right here, but I've replaced the wooden wheels with laminated oak wheels with very, very thin laminates and they come out really, really nice. The saw uh, really performs well. I'm going to show you a few more things about it uh, as we get a chance, but first off, we're just going to get started doing a little bit of resawing. All right, before I get started here, I'm just going to show you a few things about how I'm set up here. Now, I've got some feather boards on the table here clamped down. I've got a little spacer under it so that bottom feather board is laying right on the table so it'll move. You know, and these things are just made of some wood, some two by fours that have got a bunch of bandsaw cuts in them. The idea is to put a little pressure on the piece that I'm resawing, and uh, these things uh, handle it really well. So that's all you need. You don't need any special equipment or anything. It's just a couple pieces of wood and a couple of clamps. Works great. The other thing I want to show you is the fence. Now, we don't have a big long fence on the table here and uh, really ripping with a big long fence like a table saw it doesn't work really well on the bandsaw because the fence is usually you know uh, parallels the side of the bandsaw or it's 90 degrees to the table here in the front well that doesn't work because a bandsaw doesn't really like to have a fence like that because you really need to line your work up or the piece that you're sawing up with the blade now the blade is not lined up with the table. It's just the way it comes off the wheel and the way it goes through these old antique guides and everything, it's on like a little bit of an angle this way. So basically when I set a fence, I have to sight the blade and make sure I know what angle the blade's on and put the fence parallel to the blade. Now the fence is mobile here. I can move it all over the place. I got one clamp holding it down and another piece of wood on this side of it. So I can skew that fence you know, rather than like on a table saw, the fence stays perfectly parallel to the blade. This one I'm able to skew it. And it's skewed quite a bit actually, but when you saw, it saws perfectly straight. You know, so that's the way I'm set up. I've got the guide down as close as I can get it here. The fence kind of holds it up a little tiny bit, but uh, we're all set up to go. So basically what I'm going to do is start up the saw and I, I've got a little uh, dust collection system here hooked up to it that takes care of most of the dust. A little bit of it comes up on that side, but it really isn't a bother to us. And uh, so, like I say, that's the way we're set up. We're going to do a little ripping. One more thing before I get started uh, today, I just want to tell you that I've got three men on this project right here. Ken's on one end of the plank that we're going to resaw, and I've got a really good friend of mine, Mickey, down the other end. You know, I could probably do it with two guys, and we've done it with two guys, but one guy's got to keep running around to the other end to catch it, you know. I could even do it alone if I wanted to bad enough. I'd set up some horses and get away with it, but, you know, it's just so much easier when you've got a few people around if you can use them properly, and uh, this works out pretty well. So, like I say, we're going to start the saw up and start our little dust collection system up and get going.
try to talk over the saw one more time. Uh, it's really working well. The blade isn't wandering when we saw. You know, uh, the dust collection system's working right. The feather boards are working right. You know, it's just working really well for us. This is what you need to resaw. A smaller band saw than this, you might be able to get away with it, but it won't do it as well as this saw will do it. So, you know, uh, this is the setup right here. Well, that is resawing on an antique ship saw. Now, I don't think it could work out any better than that. We were taking the stuff from a, a rough one inch. It was already planed uh, before we received the wood to one inch, and it was very, very close to the edge. They must have sawn it uh, really, really close and planed it. They didn't get all the saw curth off of it. And we weren't, didn't care about that too much because what we're going to do next is run it through the planer. We're going to plane it on both sides. So we've ripped it to approximately three quarters of an inch uh, in thickness. We're going to put it through the planer, like I said, on both sides, and it's going to come out five eighths of an inch. And that is basically just one of the processes that we have to go through in order to prepare the uh, wood uh, and the strips so that we can progressively bevel saw them in the table saw just a little bit later on. Our next step is to plane this lumber out to 5 eighths of an inch. But before I do that, I just kind of like to show you this ship saw again here. Now, uh, this is one of my favorite tools, really, because it can use it for so many things. Today, we're just using it to resaw, and uh, that's a pretty simple operation. But, uh, you know, some of the things I really like about the saw, one of the things I really like about the saw is this electric motor. Now, it's a general electric motor of seven and a half horsepower and it's running on three phase current we don't have three phase current in the shop but we're using a phase converter so it works pretty well uh, with the phase converter and uh, i just think the motor just looks fantastic you know i have other seven and a half horsepower motors on other pieces of equipment that are about one quarter of that size and uh, i don't know they don't do anything for me but when i look at this thing i don't know i just like it you know it's healthy looking you know the armature is real heavy and it kind of acts like a flywheel and uh, i don't know i'm just in love with it you know and uh and it's still performing. You know, since 1938, as far as I know, that motor's been performing really, really well. So, you know, it's a fantastic piece of equipment. And now I want to show you the saw itself. Like I said, it's an L Power uh, made in Philadelphia, and uh, it's got 40 inch wheels on it. One of the things that I've done to this saw is I made new oak wheels for it. They're laminated out of eighth inch layers. I made them in a female mold, so they come out nice and round, and they mounted onto the spokes really, really well. I actually had to make some new ends for some of the spokes that were broken and different things like that, because like I said uh, before, a building had fallen on this uh, uh, bandsaw in 1938, and it broke up some of the stuff. It actually broke the table off right here, the corner of the table right here. I still have that piece, but we've never welded it back on. I don't think I miss it, so I'm just going to hang on to the piece and hang on to the saw, but I don't think I'll ever get them reconnected. But uh, I want to show you a few other things. When the building did fall on it, it actually broke this wheel right here, and I've actually welded it back together right here. It broke three spokes. 
on that wheel. That wheel is the wheel that you crank in order to change the angle on the saw. Now, a ship saw, the table doesn't change angle. The table always stays flat because if you're going to have a big heavy piece of wood on it, you don't want it sliding down the table. That would give you all kinds of trouble. What happens with a ship saw is, is the arbor tilts over or the blade tilts over like this when you, when you, uh, when you need it to. So we're only resawing with it. I'm not going to tilt it today. I have no reason to tilt it. But the other thing I wanted to say to you was a lot of this stuff I rebuilt. I had to make this vertical shaft right here that comes up through that worm gear right there. And uh, that worm gear meshes with another gear. And uh, basically both of those gears were broken. That shaft was bent and broken. And this vertical shaft that goes up through the worm gear was broken or bent. And what I did was I made new shafts, repaired the wheel, and I changed the worm gear to a slower worm. So it takes a little bit more cranking to get the same angle out of it that it used to take. You know, maybe in 10 degrees, you'd have to crank it maybe four revolutions or five before. Now you have to do seven or eight. But it's just easier to crank and it worked out well. So, you know, the saw is not brand new, that's for sure. But I'll tell you what, it would cost quite a bit of money to replace this piece of equipment or come up with something that would do the job that this saw does. We're going to be doing a little bit of planing uh, of our strip planking here. We're processing the material for the strip planking still. And uh, what we've done, uh, we've done it in a procedure. We've got all the lumber outside and we picked all the lumber over so that we'd have all the slab saw and stuff and we, uh, that we're going to use for the strip planking and all the nice corded vertical grain stuff we've set aside that's going to be used for the Carvel planking. But uh, I wanted to just show you a few things. You know, it's a procedure here that we're going through that makes it easy for us. You know, we're ripping the stuff to like four inches out in the yard and then resawing it in our bandsaw. And, uh, you know, it just makes it easier rather than resaw it 12 inches or 14 inches wide or something like that. We're going to cut it down to the width that we're going to use it, or it's double wide right now. Four inches, we're only going to use two inches. But uh, it makes it very easy to resaw. And today, like I said, we're going to be using our little planer here. Now, this is a old, probably a, from the 50s, a Delta Milwaukee planer. I've had a number of 12-inch planers, all different kinds, a Parks planer all my life, and uh, quite a few others, but uh, this one here, this one didn't seem to work very well when we first got going with it, and uh, it was quite radically out of adjustment. Really what was happening was the blades weren't set high enough in the head so that uh, it was, uh, it would, uh, in order to get it to cut, you'd be running out of springs on the feed roller. So what we did was we spent some time with it and we got it working well. And I would tell you that this little planer right here works as well as any planer I've ever used this size. This thing is really nice. It's got plenty of power. You know, it cuts really nice. It ejects. I like the speed of the head. The head speed is really nice. Uh, it goes quite fast as compared to the feed. Sometimes I think when we first started using the planer, we were thinking, well, it's pretty slow. It's a slow planer, but, you know, that really doesn't matter to us. And uh, really, it kind of works in our favor because we can stick two pieces of wood in there at the same time. We get one about halfway through and then stick the other one in there. And uh, it, it works out really well. We made a little dust collection system for it here. It never had that. It used to just spit the chips right out on the floor. But we've made this little dust collection system. We've got it hooked up to a portable dust collector, and it really does the job nice. So, you know, we're gonna we're gonna run this mahogany through it, and uh, see how it goes. The other thing I want to show you is is that I've got the planer opened up a little bit wider than it needs to be, and I'm not gonna use the gauge, you know, because I don't know if the gauge is exactly right, and I don't really need to know. I don't really know how thick this is either. You know, we tried to get it right around three quarters coming out of the bandsaw, and I think it came out pretty consistent. But, uh, you know, like I say, I don't have to know exactly how thick it is. We're gonna make it five-eighths, and uh, we're gonna push it through on both sides. We're gonna plane both sides, the side that we resawed and the side that they planed, because that side, it's kinda, uh, you can see some of the mill marks still in it where the bandsaw that cut it or the vertical 
a sawmill that cut it. I don't know if it came from a band mill or a vertical sawmill, but we've got a few, like I said, mill marks on the other side. So we're going to run it on both sides down to five eighths. That way there's no cupping in it or anything like that. We want it nice and flat, perfectly flat. It's just easier if you process it on all four sides and uh, make it very simple. We're not going to joint the edges because we're using the table saw kind of like a joiner. Every time we rip it, it comes out straighter and straighter. You know, it had nice straight edges on it, you know, in the lumber pile. And then we ripped from that and our edge came out straighter than the first edge. And then we're going to rip it down the middle and those two rips will come out even straighter. And then we're going to rip them again to progressive bevel to fit them onto the boat. So, you know, they'll come out really, really nice. So, hey, let's start up the planer and get some work done. That's three quarter right there. up already Ken we're gonna run it one more time because I already tightened it up so we're gonna run that one one more now that little planer worked fantastic uh, you know, uh, it, it's really fast enough. You know, we can just barely handle the lumber and get it put back where it came from before the next piece is done. So it uh, doesn't matter if it's a little slow, it just works great. And uh, it's taken me a few adjustments to get that first side, to get the mill marks off that first side. But you can see that when I was planing it, like I had said, I put the board through the planer first and then cranked the adjustment up until it started planing. Well, you know, it was fine, but I didn't get it quite deep enough. So what I did was I cranked it up a little bit more. But despite what people think, uh, you can change the adjustment on the planer as the board is going through, which is, you know, something that not everybody does. But, uh, you know, it's really no big deal. So you end up with half of the board a little thinner than the rest of it. You just run it back through again. So we've got it down to five-eighths of an inch, cleaned up on both sides really nice. And the next thing we're going to do is run it through the table saw.